Hey, what's up guys? Uh, looking at another video here of a trip I took a little while back up to Pennsylvania. Flew in from Dallas to Philadelphia. Just a few shots of being on the flight. And uh, up to O'Donnell Metal Fabrication. Uh, a really neat shop with a cool group of guys up there. My main contacts uh, were Mike and Jason. And, um, and then but I like to make friends everywhere I go. And of course I walked in there and started making friends with the main shop foreman of the place and check him out now. We have these quesadillas for lunch. And we attracted a friend. Hey. All right, guys, here is a, uh, an overview of the machine that we're looking at on this one. This is a Prima machine, fully enclosed. Uh, it's a five by 10 configuration. And this particular one uh, is a, you know, has a tube cutter along with it. And uh, by the way, just taking a look at some of the other machines around the shop. These guys build a lot of uh, stainless steel, uh, commercial grade kitchen uh, ranges, range hoods, and, uh, you know, products related to industrial, commercial sheet metal fabrication. So anyway, um, back looking at the uh, at the machine, uh, they left some of the side covers off while we were still doing the final, uh, you know, setup on the machine and getting it running, getting it dialed in. You can see the Rake is 6,000 watt power supply. There's the water chiller and then the control cabinet. Um, Obviously, this thing sprawls out pretty large with everything involved with the tube cutter and the gantry hanging out the side of it. Again, a lot of the panels are not installed in this particular uh, video. Here's a look at the tube cutter making the final connections on it. We had a couple problems on this one. One was related to the focus. You could see here if you dialed in a specific focus that the, that the actual dial in the laser head responding to the focus was uh, not responding in the normal way that it would and normally you know if you if you specify let's say positive five focus and tell it manually here on this screen to go to positive five that the window on the autofocus servo inside the the laser head would take you there but you see it was responding in a negative way when you told it to go positive well, as it turns out, working with Prima to kind of figure out what was going on, this is my first time installing a six kilowatt machine. They have a bulletin from the manufacturer that this particular head uh, is goes the opposite. So whenever you specify something positive, it goes negative, and it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It, it's a 2.2 to one ratio. So you have a couple options related to that. Um, and by the way, looking at some 6,000 watt parameters here, so if anybody's interested in 6,000 watt parameters, how to get the machine to respond, these are what they respond to. But, you know, you had a couple of choices of changing the ratio on the servo drive for the autofocus servo and then reversing the polarity. You could use your normal focus data to do that. But on this particular case, I elected to go ahead and just manually calculate in my mind the correction on the on the focus data and was able to get it dialed in with that but had some problems you know in the beginning trying to do that and eventually got you know a range of materials dialed in this on this machine so just again looking at some footage here of of the machine in the state that it's currently in again you, when you're installing a machine you decide to do it yourself you really want to not fully install all the you know, covers, enclosures, everything, because you may need to get back in there uh, to diagnose something or troubleshoot something. You know, you know, like that. So uh, here's a look at the exchange table. Uh, you know, this machine has an exchange table, so you can be cutting on one set of machine while offloading and loading on the on, at the back of the machine on a separate machine. At any high production machine, it's best to go ahead and get an exchange table it will really increase the productivity of the machine. So again, just looking around in the shop at some of the machines and the tooling they have there, really neat old 
uh, press brakes they have. And here's a look at some finished products. So again, a lot of stainless steel and they, uh, they really do a nice job here of okay, TIG welding all the seams and, and that kind of thing. So anyway, here's a shot of Jason and I trying to resolve an issue with the tube cutter. And uh, we fussed around with that one night for quite a few hours and had not a lot of luck uh, resolving it. But they did resolve it after I left. And then yep, there worry. is a shot of uh, some issues with the first couple of parameters I was trying to dial in when I didn't understand the focus. And once we got the focus dialed in right, uh, we got it cutting really, really good and were able to dial in all their stainless parameters with uh, nitrogen and their carbon steel parameters with air. And um, anyway, so a lot of people ask me like, you know, how, how thick can you cut with X? Well, here's, in a future video, I'll be showing you more about this machine that you're seeing here. This was done in Minnesota after the Pennsylvania machine, and this is the maximum you can cut with 3,000 watt laser. This is three quarter inch steel. You can see the pierce routine is very slow, very conservative, and yes, you could dial in this pierce and get it to cut faster. You can see it gets through the bottom of the material about halfway through the routine, um, but if you're going to do production cutting, you need that extra overhead because, uh, you know, once the plate heats up, you know, you're going to be able to need that. But you see that's cutting very, very slow. Um, and But we do get a nice result. You'll see the edge quality that we're able to produce here in a second. And you see uh, we had this one set up with a, a ring cut configuration to allow the corners. One of the issues with cutting sharp corners with thick steel with oxygen is it'll sort of eat away the corners and cause some issues, but the ring cutting allows a chance to uh, a little bit of cooling there. So you can see here the, the edge, we got a pretty nice straight hole, we got a pretty nice straight square edge, but we do have some serration and we don't have that nice, nice glossy edge. But anyway, guys, that'll be it on this video and we will see you in the next one.